There are lots of thinkers whose ideas underpin this course. Um, up above me, say, above my right shoulder, we have the statue of Adam Smith from Edinburgh um, in Scotland. Adam Smith, the founder of economics as we know it today. Above my left shoulder, we have John Maynard Keynes in his study in the 1930s. Above my head, we have from a Chinese government um, cartoon series of a couple of years ago, we have from your left to right, Friedrich Engels, his best friend Karl Marx, and Karl Marx's wife, Baroness Jenny von Westphalen. But we're not going to... All of these, all of these thinkers will enter into the course, yes, but we're not going to focus on any one of them in particular. Rather, the focus of the course will draw upon a 20th century um, thinker, Karl Polanyi, and upon a book of his you know, that we're not going to read. Um, it's called The Great Transformation. We're not going to read it because it's a difficult and I think a badly written book. Um, in this, Karl Polanyi is, I think, very much like Hyman Minsky, who was also a complete and total genius, but whose books are approachable only to highly trained professionals and only to a few of those, and only those who themselves are willing to spend immense amounts of effort and struggle. With Charlie, or with um, Hyman Minsky, he has a very important influence on economic thought today, largely because of the interpretation given to him by Charlie Kindleberger in his book Manias, Panics, and Crashes, which applies Minsky's doctrines to understanding the world. With respect to Polanyi, we're going to be reading an introduction from... Davis professor Fred Bloch's um, introduction to a more rec recent version of the Great Transformation. It provides, um, it provides, I think, a good indication as to what Polanyi is thinking about and will get you going as to what his central ideas are. Um, and, you know, his ideas are of great importance throughout the 20th century, not just to the left, but to thinkers on the right as well. You know, above my left shoulder here, we have the management consultant, Peter Drucker, writer of the concept of the corporation, the big management guru as to how American business should function in the second half of the 20th century and second half of the 1900s. Drucker loved Polanyi. In fact, Drucker got Polanyi the job at Bennington College that allowed Polanyi to kind of eat and support himself while he was writing The Great Transformation. Okay, um, so what is Bloch saying and what is Polanyi saying? Well, I think you have to start with Polanyi by saying that he is coming out of a childhood and a young adulthood in Central Europe in which he sees market libertarians and he sees socialists and he finds himself profoundly, profoundly disagreeing with both with respect to how they think society works and how society gets organized. Polanyi's starting place is a belief that pre-modern economies are embedded in society. What you are allowed to consume, what you are allowed to produce, who you are allowed to command, these all are functions of who you are, of what kind of person you are. You know, your place in the economy is inextricably tied up with your social role in society, with your social network, and with how people perceive you as a particular category of being. But then as time passes, as market economies grow, market economies begin to turn into market societies in which you can produce anything, do anything, 
command anyone, always provided that you have the money. What you produce and consume and do no longer depends on who you are and no longer depends on what your social network is. Um, it instead depends on how much money you have with which to command the labor and authority of others. Um, and this means that your rights become transformed. That in pre-industrial, pre-market economy societies, and indeed since today, people believe they have rights. They have rights to respect, to be treated well by others. They have rights to the continued functioning of their community and their network of relationships. They have rights to an income commensurate with what they deserve, i.e. with their status, and they have a right to a certain amount of stability. And if a government, an economy, a society does not produce those rights, does not validate those rights, um, people will be unhappy. And thus a market economy makes them unhappy because a market economy seeks the disembedding of the economy from society. All of a sudden, your rights no longer depend on what kind of person you are perceived to be, or what your social network and place in the community is. Your rights are determined by how much money you have, or how much money you can earn with the property you have, including the human capital, the personal property, the skills that you have. Briefly, the market cares only about property rights. And the only property rights that the market cares about are those that enable you to produce and then sell things for which the rich are willing to pay. And if you are the owner of such property rights, well then you get to spend your money and people do what you want and you get to do what you want and to consume what you want. If you don't, if you are not the owner, if you are not rich, then you can live the style of life in the community that you would like to live only if your life passes somebody else's maximum profitability test, only if you're useful to them. This is so for the community that you live in. This is so for the income that you receive. This is so for whether or not your particular job and place in society is stable or not. It must pass a maximum profitability test, and if it doesn't, then the community you thought was yours, the income that you thought you deserved and were entitled to, and even the stability of your job or the ability to get the kind of job you're used to in the place you're used to, all that can vanish if some rootless cosmopolite financier 4,000 miles away decides it doesn't pass a profitability test. And they will. Because an industrial market economy, this is something Polanyi got from Schumpeter, is subject to technological and entrepreneurial revolutions so that all established orders are steamed away. Thus, we arrive at the Polanyian dynamic. Society reacts as the market economy attempts to destroy all rights that are not property rights, and so move people around society and the economy like pieces on a chessboard. You know, treats the land on which they live as if it were just another commodity to be pulled out of its old use and repurposed for new uses that satisfy someone's maximum profitability test. That treats their labor, the value of their labor, as, again, something that's just another commodity and that can be repurposed in some other way, doing something completely different if it passes someone's maximum profitability test. And then finance the flow of money and of purchases necessary in order to maintain the stability of your job or at least to create situations under which if one job ends, you can get another job you think is appropriate to you quickly. That also 
functions only if the continued flow of finance passes someone's maximum profitability test. If it doesn't, then even your ability to get the kind of job at the income you think you deserve goes away. That's what the market economy tries to do. It tries to create a stark utopia in which people's livelihoods and lives are moved about to respond to maximum profitability tests. And people do not like this. People think they have more rights than property rights. And people think that the property rights, that the rights they have are more than just property rights that are valuable only if they are useful in producing things for which rich people have a serious Jones. And so the Polanyian dynamic, the growth of the market and the technological changes that it will bring, attempt to disembed the economy from society, and society reacts. Society tries to reestablish people with rights that they think are theirs. And it may be a left-wing reaction, it may be a right-wing reaction, it may be a centrist reaction, it may be smart, it may be stupid, it may be farsighted, it may be insane, that social movements and political movements will react to undo the disembedding of people's economic lives from their social expectations that the market economy is attempting to impose on them. That double movement um, in which the market attempts to turn every piece of your life including things that are definitely not you know, commodities to be bought and sold and moved about on the marketplace into commodities. And then society reacts to attempt to re-embed the economy and the social order. That's how Polanyi views the history of the 20th century, and it's a very, very good lens with which to view things.